Man, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of EOS. It's 1090 Jake, man. I'm rocking with y'all. Y'all rocking with me. And for this video, we're going to be speaking on Jacksonville, Florida rapper Kenny Caps, a Julio Fulio associate who was taken down by the feds after Fulio's murder. By now, everyone's well aware of what took place over a month ago with Julio Fulio being killed. All five of his accused killers are sitting inside of the Hillsborough County Jail in Tampa and awaiting trial. But the sad ending of his story is just a twist and turn in another. Kenny Caps, an affiliate of Julio Fulio, could be seen celebrating with him in his final hours and on the news after the murder. He'd pay his respects through Instagram that same day, stating he knows Fulio is at peace. But even during his time of mourning, the feds show no sympathy. July 24th, 2024, the feds announced 22-year-old Robert Howard III, who's more commonly known as Kenny Caps, was being indicted on two counts for distributing 50 grams or more of meth. If convicted on both counts, he faces a minimum mandatory 10 years and up to a life sentence in federal prison. According to the affidavit, on June 11th, an undercover ATF agent communicated with Kenny through iMessage, who agreed to sell him a half pound of meth for $850. Two days later, ATF agents along with detectives from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office participated in a joint operation. They'd equipped the undercover with audio and video recording equipment, along with $1,300 in cash. At 1.30 p.m., the undercover went to an address on Polk Ave, Texting Kenny, he'd arrived. Kenny walked out, got into the passenger seat of the undercover's car, and passed him the white bag in exchange for the money. After a short discussion, Kenny advised the undercover he could sell coke for reasonable prices, and by 1.35 p.m., the undercover was on his way back to the briefing location. At the ATF Jacksonville Division office, audio and video will be downloaded to a compact disc. Kenny could clearly be seen selling to the undercover, was easily identifiable, and according to the ATF, the home that the deal went down at is Kenny's residence. The bag would weigh out to 272 grams, testing positive for methamphetamine. So the feds essentially caught Kenny in a calculated trap, leaving him with no option but to plead guilty, as there isn't much to fight when you're on video at your house serving the feds. But why did they wait? The feds had him on June 13th. Fulio would be killed on June 23rd. But it wasn't until July 24th when Kenny would be arrested and violate his probation. It's like the feds waited to see how Kenny would react, knowing his history. See, Kenny was no more than just an affiliate of Julio Fulio. And back in 2018, his name would ring. Within the city of Jacksonville, two high schools would become known for their violent rivalry. You had William Reigns on the north side and Robert E. Lee on the southwest side. Back in 2006, a 13-year-old was shot in a drive-by on his way home from a Reigns game. In 2007, two students were shot after a Reigns vs. Lee game when someone fired 15 to 20 times outside the stadium. In 2012, a fight after the Reigns League game ended with a 20-year-old being shot. In 2016, the sound of a falling grill resembled a gunshot, leaving players taking cover on the field as fans ran for safety. And in 2017, players took off running mid-game after an off-field commotion and rumors of something happening. By 2018, Reigns wasn't taking any chances. 30 police officers, 20 additional security guards, metal detectors, and wands were believed to be enough to keep the game safe. Roughly 4,000 people had shown up to watch, and by halftime, the game had to be stopped, with players on both teams being instructed to get down on the field after a disturbance on Lee's side of the stands. The game would continue, and Lee would eventually beat Reigns 16-15, ending the reigning state champion's 13-game winning streak. Three-fourths of the fans in the stadium had left, and the teams had just made it to their locker rooms when gunfire erupted. 
Yeah, we are just now getting confirmation from JSO that this is going to be a triple shooting. Two people injured, one person is deceased. Let me step out of the way here. If we zoom the camera in right there, that is going to be the area uh, where there, where that uh, field house is located. Again, we're just at, we're just outside of the stadium here, uh, uh, Reigns High School. Earlier tonight, uh, Reigns took on Lee High School. Everything appeared to be fine during the game, and then this happens. As I was saying that, I'm listening to bow bow. Bow, bow, bow. Tell my Vietnam veteran. The guns, the bullets was going this way. I know which way the bullets was going. Everybody was running and they was right in this area right here, was shooting. Pow, 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 pow. And this was after the game. After the game. Officers would find 19 year old Gerard Adams shot in the head, pronouncing him dead by the ticket area just outside the stadium. A 17 year old male was found shot in the arm and a 16 year old female was shot in the foot, a wound that would leave her physically disabled. Speaking with police, one of the victims would claim Robert Howard, aka Kenny Caps, shot him. Upon further questioning, he admitted he never saw Kenny with a gun, but provided details about an earlier dispute where Kenny told him, somebody going to die tonight. Two additional witnesses would come forward, stating they saw Kenny with a gun the night of the game. One would claim to have seen a confrontation between Kenny and the 17-year-old surviving victim during the game. He then saw Kenny approach Gerard after the game in the courtyard, where he pulled a gun from his waistband and aimed it at him. The witness didn't see him shoot, as he'd already started running away, but 25 seconds later he heard the shots. That same witness would identify Kenny by photo lineup. The second witness says she saw Kenny, who she personally knows, confront Gerard after the game. She'd claimed to witness Kenny pull the gun from his waistband and shoot Gerard in the head. As she was running away, she heard more gunfire, and when shown a picture, she identified Kenny as the one she saw shoot Gerard. Multiple shell casings were recovered at the scene, and later testing would confirm all shots were fired from one gun. Detectives would determine a fight broke out between Kenny and the victim. They were both ejected from the stands, but made their way back into the game. That's when detectives believe Kenny targeted the two males, shooting them both as the female was shot by a stray. 16 year old Kenny's mugshot could be seen all over the news as it was announced he was arrested at his school and charged with first degree murder and two counts of attempted murder for the triple shooting. Sheriffs announced the shooter and both male victims all have associations with known criminal street gang members. Kenny was from the north side of Jacksonville, the same area as Reigns High. Gerard, the victim, was more commonly known throughout Jacksonville as Spaz, and he was from a hood on the east side known as 12 Honey. Many rumors have spread over exactly what took place on the night of the game, with another major name being brought up. It's said that Kenny was with Adrian Gaynor that night, and Adrian would be famously known throughout Jacksonville Drill as Bibby. According to Reddit rumors, Kenny and Bibby disrupted the game when they got in a fight with Spaz and his friend named Will. It's actually believed Bibby was the one who fired the fatal shot killing Spaz while Kenny shot the friend, but somehow witnesses were only able to identify Kenny. 1,353 days later, Kenny would plead guilty to reduce charges of manslaughter and aggravated battery, and apparently the charges were reduced because of the witnesses. Say Cheese would interview Kenny Caps, where he would speak on the fact that the witnesses told, but refused to testify. Kenny would be sentenced to 15 years on a split sentence, meaning he'd have to serve five years in Florida State Prison with the rest of his time to be served on probation. He'd receive credit for the three and a half plus years he spent in county jail and would only spend 17 months inside of actual prison before being released. While some would say he got a good deal, everything comes with a price. While he was in jail in 2019, 16 year old Bibby was killed inside of the Hilltop Apartments. And gunfire erupts inside a northwest side apartment complex. It leaves this 16-year-old dead. Neighbors say that the shooting sounded like a war zone. 60 to 70 rounds had to be dropped in, uh, in the course of maybe 15 seconds. 
Bibby would always be praised by Julio Fulio, but would also become one of the most dissed names in Florida Drill. Only eight months after Bibby's death, Kenny's father Pokey would pass away. Granted a furlough by the courts, Kenny was transported to his father's funeral in handcuffs and a uniform, as can be seen in a picture with Julio Fulio. Kenny would be released from prison in May of 2023 and two months after would start dropping music. Only lasting 14 months before being indicted by the feds, Kenny witnessed the death of Julio Fulio. He'd also witnessed the violence come back around full circle as the two Murphy cousins charged as being two out of three shooters that ambushed Fulio are both from 1200 and both are related to Spaz, Kenny's victim. It's unclear what will happen to the remaining nine years Kenny has on state probation as this Fed case will take priority, meaning Kenny will have to finish one sentence before finishing the other. Now this is a, I mean, this is a tough situation, right? You got a 16 year old Kenny Caps who according to his arrest paperwork was 5'4" when he got arrested for the triple shooting. 16 years old, 5'4", fighting a 19 year old and a 17 year old that shouldn't have even been in that area because they weren't even from that side of Jacksonville. I don't know what happens in the fight, whether he's winning, whether he's losing. They end up outside of the stadium. Gunshots go off. One body, two attempts. Now, 15 years for killing someone and shooting two other people is a great deal at the end of the day. I mean, beating the case would be lovely, but 15 years for that is, is a good deal. The thing is, a split sentence is somewhat of a trap. See, Kenny Caps was only 16 when he caught this case, meaning he never lived in society as an adult or as a responsible adult, right? He's never worked, he's never, none of that. He was 16, went to jail for damn near four years, and then did another year and some change inside of prison. Came home, lasted 14 months. They're saying he was dealing meth. Apparently they have all the evidence against him. I just think it's weird that knowing he has a technically a violent history because of his convictions, right? I mean, he pled out to manslaughter so he can talk about the shit all he wants. But the feds knew he had a violent history. They catch him for the math. They got him dead to rights. And then Fulio gets murdered, but they wait another month to see if anything happens. It's almost like everything against him is a trap. You're giving a kid 10 years of probation, that's a trap. And then you catch him doing something, but you want to see if he's going to go and retaliate because you know he's done some wild shit before. Now, at the end of the day, we're responsible for our own actions, right? To hear that he only lasted 14 months, it sucks. And to hear that he came home to see one of his close friends get killed is even worse. This was the same friend that made it to his father's funeral that he had to show up to in handcuffs. Now, what's my opinion on what's going to take place? I don't know how much time they can offer him and the feds. They say if he's convicted, it's a minimum mandatory 10. To hear that sounds crazy because that would mean if he gets hit with a minimum man, he's got to do 10 years. And once he's done with that, because he violated probation... The 10 years of probation he has. He was only out 14 months, so he has about nine years left. It's very possible he could go to the feds, do his time in the feds, and then be transferred from a federal prison right back to the Florida Department of Corrections to finish out that nine years. Unfortunately, it's a dirty game, and that's how they play. When you're dealing with the feds in the state, the punishment isn't together. It's two completely separate entities. So there is a chance he could get hit with 10 in the feds, have to do nine in the state. Y'all do the math. But hey, let me know y'all's thoughts and comments in the comment section. It's 1090 Jake. I'm rocking with y'all, y'all rocking with me. Till next time.